first one is stop watching pro boxing. Now I know what you might be thinking. Well, man, don't I want to watch pros, watch the top guys in order to be a top guy? Well, unless you are going pro right now or about to or getting ready for it, and if you're just an amateur or maybe just getting ready for your first amateur fight, you need to stop watching so many pros because how do pros fight? A lot of times the guys they're watching, they're fighting 12 rounds. First round, kind of a throwaway round. It's a feel-out round, all right? So you need to watch your favorite boxer when they're an amateur. And nowadays, it's so much easier to do that than it was back in the day. Back in the day, you didn't have YouTube, so it was a lot harder to do that, all right, guys? So no excuses. Next one is uh, make sure you keep your eyes on your opponent's chest and not their face or their eyes. Don't get, don't get uh, you know, hypnotized by their pretty eyes, all right? Why is that? You wanna watch the center of the body. Center of the body right here is gonna tell you what everything does. It's gonna tell you when the shoulders move, where the head is, and it's like, if I lean over here, you know where my head is, it's right there. You don't even need to look at it. My head, my body can't be here and my head be right here, all right, it's not gonna happen. And then from there, you can hit the head easily and then also hit the body because you're just staring at the center. You can see with your peripheral vision here and here, everything else. If you're looking at, up at the face, the eyes, you only do that to fake somebody out. Maybe look downstairs and hit them up top or whatever. But if you're looking up top, then you have to look down in order to see how they hit the body, all right? So keep your eyes on the chest. And it also is good for a couple other reasons. Another one, number three, create openings versus look for openings. Again, if you're a beginner fighter, novice fighter, all right? Get ready for your first fight, whatever. You're gonna have more success creating openings. What does that mean? That means throwing punches. Throwing punches to then therefore set up another punch versus sitting back and trying to see where an opening is. Oh man, I missed it, all right? So, don't look for openings, create them. Next one, we wanna get rid of our blink reflex. What is that? That's when something comes at your face, you wanna blink on it. See, I did it a couple times. You wanna be able to get used to something coming at your face, pop and you keep your eyes open. So you can see, because when you flinch, when you blink, then you're gonna get hit by something. You're gonna get hit by the next thing or the faint that that was to make you flinch. Your defense is gonna be very good, so you have to be able to block whatnot while keeping the eyes open. Also, a lot of people, when they punch, they blink. When they punch hard. When they punch easy, they're not blinking, but they'll punch hard and they'll be blinking on every punch, all right? So you need to get rid of that. What are some ways to get rid of it? One way is to do Literally what I'm doing right here, having something fly at your face, even lightly touch your nose. So you get used to that thing coming at you while not flinching or blinking, all right? You wanna get rid of that. Next one is when you exercise. Focus on full body movements unless you're doing something prehab or rehab. What does that mean? Get rid of the bodybuilding exercises. You don't need to do curls. No need for it. No need for it. You're not gonna be curling and boxing. I've heard people say, oh, it helps with the upcuts or whatever. Well, a row or a pull-up is the same contraction where you're pulling like that, so it's gonna, it's gonna help you. Next one, all right, have your defense, number seven, have your defense and offense flow together. What does that mean? That means to have everything so you can be defensive and offensive all together. I've seen some guys, I think one guy that I used to train with, he would, um, when he was attacking, hands down, kind of confident, looking like, like Joe Kazagi or something like that. Then, when you throw at him, this is him. Ah, ah, ah. And then he goes back to offensive, like that. But then now he, oh, you're throwing always like this. He couldn't flow it together. He couldn't be down here, boom, boom, block a shot, boom, 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 like that. He couldn't put it all together, all right? So you wanna make sure that whatever you're doing, however you're training, whatever your style is, that you mix your defense and your offense together. All right, next one. Catch when you jab, that's a big one. Every time you throw a jab, be ready to catch that straight shot coming at you. So I'm here on a guy, I'm gonna come in, and I pop, I wanna be ready for that jab to slide right with me. Because if he slips my jab, if he comes over it or on the inside with the right hand, I wanna be able to stop that shot. If you wanna watch a classic example of stepping in without catching and getting caught, watch Juan Manuel Marquez knock out Manny Pacquiao. But there's also many other examples that are less egregious or less, you know, impactful. But regardless, when you jab, 
and especially if you step in with that jab, you're stepping into a straight shot, you wanna be able to stop the straight shot that you're stepping into, because it's very hard to see that coming. If you're stepping into me, it's hard to tell if this hand's getting bigger or not, because everything's getting bigger because you're stepping in. Make sense? All right, then, number eight. Keep your chin down, but let your chin go up when you go down, all right? Let me explain first why you should keep your chin down, all right? Where's the best place to get hit on your skull if you had to get hit? Where is it? It's the forehead. Why the forehead? Because that's the thickest part of your whole skull, all right? So if you do have to get hit on your head, that's the place you want to get hit, not on your nose, not on your jaw, which is the button in boxing. Nowhere like that, all right? Now, though, so your chin is down like this. Here, and you keep your eyes on your chest so it's easy to keep that chin down. Also makes it easier to protect your face versus if you're up here, it's harder to protect that face, all right? So, I'm here, chin down, but when I go down, I want to look up a little bit so that I can see my guy. If my chin is down like this and I'm boxing, and then I go down, I can't see down there, all right? So you're here with the chin down when you're up top. When you go down, head comes up just a little bit, not high, but then when you come back up, it goes back down. Easy to make a big, bold, big old mistake, and maybe your chin goes up as you come down here, you're looking, then you come back up like that. You wanna make sure you avoid that. One way you can practice that is by using an object like this, or by using a slip rope, and same thing, you're watching the rope as you're weaving, so your chin is down, you're watching that slip rope, you go under, your head comes up a little bit to watch that rope, here, come back down. Very important. All right, now, number nine. Focus on more technique, not more effort. Again, a lot of beginner boxers, novice boxers, what holds them back is they think more effort is what's gonna make them a better boxer versus more technique. Through proficiency of movement, you have increase in speed, increase in power, and everything else. So get your movement patterns nice and smooth. Focus on that first. And once you got that down, then you can start increasing the effort and it will actually pay off. Last one, big one. Get loose. Stay loose and be loose. What does that mean? Think of any great boxer in the history of boxing. Picture somebody in your mind. Great boxer. Not just a good boxer. Great boxer. Like, they had longevity that a lot of people could mimic successfully. They were loose. They were relaxed. Like Sugar Robinson. So it's like one of my dad's former coaches, Tony Zell, two-time middleweight world champion, told people in the CYO gym, you get loose, you go to the top. So that's number 10, get loose, you go to the top, put these 10 secrets into your training, and it's gonna make a load of difference, guys. Trust me, I've seen him do it every single time.